everyone, Adrienne here. So today we are finally diving back into my absinthe reviews. I know I haven't posted in a while, I'm so sorry, but as soon as my concert tw was over, there was a lot of other things that kind of came up and I was dealing with some health issues as well. So I am going to be seeing a doctor about the health issues within the next week, I promise. <laughs> So yes, I am glad to finally be back doing absinthe reviews, which is something I love very, very dearly. And especially when it's very high quality absinthe, such as what is produced by Stefano Rossoni. So I'm very excited. So today we're going to be reviewing Le Montagneux, which is part of his series of absinthe. I am very excited to try this, especially since I loved L'Italienne so much. Oh my god, that was the most floral and lovely absinthe I've ever had. <laughs> So I'm really excited to see what this is going to be like. Uh, he says that the flavor profile for this one is going to be different from the flavor profile of L'Italienne, which, you know, sometimes that can make it really, really fun and you kind of don't know what to expect. So let's read a little bit about La Montagneux. After having drawn the inspiration for L'Italienne and La Cronuie from Italian landscapes, I decided that I would create a trilogy of absence, all very different but all following the same philosophy that the third would be inspired by the alpine forests in northern Italy. Ooh, I like it already. I really like, like, alpine-y absence. They're really, really nice. I started working on Le Montagneuse shortly after finishing La Cronuit in 2008. I envisioned a recipe that would offer different layers of balsamic notes, a background of secondary notes including some earthy tones, lower fennel content compared to L'Italien in La Cronuit, and a robust coloration to complete the profile with some herbaceous notes. Unfortunately, some of the wild harvested alpine ingredients I wanted to use were extremely hard to find, and as all of you know, I refuse to produce an absinthe under my name if I cannot ensure that I have at my disposal the best quality ingredients. So, after a few early prototypes, that project was put on ice until 2022. Yay! So happy to hear that. Last year, I finally found a source for the rare and expensive alpine ingredients, so I immediately restarted the project, excited that after more than 10 years, I could finally complete my absinthe trilogy. In September of 2022, I resumed the absinthe distillation, running prototypes, testing all the new ingredients, adjusting the recipe, etc. I also gave the prototypes enough months of aging to ensure that the absinthe would age well and achieve the balance I wanted. That... Mad respect. I absolutely love that. And again, I can really tell that Stefano really puts a lot of love and dedication into his product. And I really love it when you can tell that absolute distillers really put their heart and soul into their work like this. And again, not to go back to the fire debate, but this is why I get so upset when you know, people insist that fire is traditional and required for absinthe preparation. It's because I read stuff like this and I get to know distillers and listen to their stories about how much work went into making their absinthe only for some jackass to set it on fire because it looks cool. Come on. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Finally, in June 2023, I settled on the final version of the recipe and started the absinthe production for the commercial release. La Montagneux provides something new and different compared to the previous two absinthe while still fitting perfectly within the philosophy underlining the trilogy. Due to the scarcity of the wild harvested ingredients, the production of Le Montagneux is limited and only will be distilled if all the correct ingredients are available. Ooh, ooh. So I feel like this is kind of a rare treat. Like I'm really, really excited. All right, so with all that being said, I am going to reposition the camera and we are going to get a load of the appearance and the louche and check out all the other components that make up a good absinthe. And also, by the way, I did get a new microphone. So if you guys like the way that this one sounds, please tell me. Um, I was getting several complaints when Kenny and I were streaming on Twitch that the microphone we were using was producing kind of a metallic robotic sound, which I have no idea why that's a thing. So let me know if this sounds better. All right, moving on. All right, everyone. So now comes the really fun part. We get to start evaluating this beautiful absinthe. 
Okay, so we're going to start with evaluating its appearance, and you may or may not be able to see, but I cracked this guy open with a knife to make sure that the integrity of the bottle was maintained. So we're going to see what this is like. Ooh, oh my god, guys. Did I just magically get transported into a little forest somewhere in the Pacific Northwest? Oh my god. <laughs> wow. That... The smell right off the bat is already impressive. <gasps> oh my god. Guys. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. That is a perfect peridot right there. That is intensely beautiful. I cannot get over it. And then of course, as you can see, there's absolutely no sediment and it's crystal clear. I would say that color is damn near perfect. Oh my God, that is divine. Wow. Okay, so uh, color gets very rare, five stars. All right, so now we're going to move on to the louche and we're going to see how gorgeous this looks when you add water. I just love how it shimmers as the water is being added to it. This is amazing. Again, it doesn't matter how many times I do this. I just fall in love with absinthe every single time. Oh my god, would you look at that. It did not take very long to louche. I am being a little slower and more deliberate with the addition of water here, but wow, that was still a very fast transformation. Oh my god, guys. Wow. Oh, that's so pretty. And that is also a very dummy thick louche. Thick with two C's. <laughs> oh my god, that is just glowing from how beautiful that is. Guys. This is probably one of the most beautiful louches I've ever seen in my life. And uh, I forgot to mention it, I think, but this is 65% alcohol. All right, I'm gonna call it there. I really, really, really don't want to overwater it. So the louche is gorgeous. That is so thick. So five stars because that is gorgeous. That is so beautiful. So it's like thick like gorgeous golden green color with little hints of blue kind of uh, from my vantage point I do see a little ring of blue happening and that is indicative of the presence of wormwood so obviously you know this guy is authentic yeah this is so gorgeous I am definitely going to give it five stars for louche I cannot believe like if only you guys could see it from my vantage point like in real life in person because what it's showing on camera is absolutely not doing it justice all right, so now we are going to reposition the camera again and we're going to evaluate all the other aspects of Le Montagneux. I'm really excited to see what this is going to be like. All right, everyone, we're going to try Le Montagneux. I'm really excited about this color. It is intense. And literally, I'm holding it up to this bright ass ring light over here and no light is getting through. None at all. I, I like to call this my light test. So when I see that the louche is this thick, I get really excited. Am I weird for that? I hope not. Okay, let's do this. Okay, no joke. I feel like I am walking through the woods in the Pacific Northwest. 
I imagine it's probably a similar experience to what's happening in the Italian Alps. So I, I feel absolutely transported. Oh, this is so good. Holy Trinity's coming through. I can definitely tell that they backed off on the fennel a little bit because it's not quite as peppery, but there's definitely some really nice, like piney, fresh notes happening in there. That's awesome. I'm definitely not mad about that. As a matter of fact, I'm very excited about it. And there's just that little tickle of, there's kind of like a sappy note in there that really is making me very excited. Like you ever, you ever just smell sap and you get really happy because you know you're away from it all? That's what this is like. I love it. So Aroma, I want to give it about four stars. Um, it's not perfect, but there's definitely a lot of really interesting things going on. It has a traditional structure for the aroma and it's just really fresh and piney and pepperminty. It's just so good. All right, so now we're going to get into the taste. So as always, guys, santé, and please drink responsibly. <sighs> oh my God. Oh boy. My mouth is watering intensely right now. Oh, that's so lovely. So the moment it touched my tongue, I just got, I definitely got more anise in the flavor profile than I did with l'Italien. With l'Italien, it just felt like I was drinking flowers. Uh, with a little bit of the Holy Trinity kind of hanging in the back, but obviously it's absinthe, duh. But with this one, the anise, you get it right away. It's really nice and sweet, and then it's rounded out really, really nicely with the piney and alpine pepperminty kind of notes. It reminds me of an earthier and more intense version of Jade Terminus Oxygene. So I'm really impressed with this. I If it is comparable to me to Jade Terminus Oxygene, it is really, really high up there. As a matter of fact, I think it's fair to put this among my top five, maybe top 10. Oh my God, that's so good. I may have underwatered it just a little bit, but it's always better to underwater it than overwater it. I still like how it tastes at this particular moment, but I am gonna add just a little bit more water just to see what happens, see if it changes the flavor profile or softens it up a little bit because it's a little intense, but it's still delicious. Oh my God, that is just making my entire mouth tingle in the best way possible. It's obviously not from star anise because I would differentiate between tingling and numbness and typically the numbness or anesthetizing kind of sensation would come from star anise, but I'm not getting that here. I'm just getting really, really nice tingles and I'm guessing that's from the wormwood. We added a little more water. We're gonna see how this goes. Mm. It definitely sweetened up a little bit with the addition of the water. So I would say probably three and a half to four parts water for this one, but it was definitely fully loosed by the time three, like three parts came in. So for flavor, I want to give it four and a half stars, which, you know, it's really hard to reach perfection, but I love how earthy this one is and I love how intense the anise is. Personally, I love green anise. Green anise has my heart and I do really like it when absents are really intense and forward on the green anise because that's how they were over a hundred years ago. And I do like abiding by tradition, but I love how the piney and alpine and pepperminty and earthy notes really complement this one, where L'Italien felt like walking through like an archway of hundreds or maybe even thousands of flowers. This one feels like walking through the woods in the Pacific Northwest. If you guys have ever been to the Pacific Northwest, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <sighs> it, it tastes like home, but it also feels otherworldly of a place I've never been. Obviously, I've never been to Italy. So I'm gonna try adding just a little bit more water here and see what my husband thinks about it. Because he's under the impression that his opinion matters more than mine. It's a joke, of course, but you know. Hey, Mr. Averett, could you come in here? So this is one of the other Italian absinths. And this one has like a piney, earthy kind of thing going on. And I want to see what you think of it. To me, it smells like walking through the woods. There's kind of a minty 
taste to it. Mm-hmm. And it mouthfeel. Minty taste and mouthfeel. Mouthfeel, okay. You know, kind of like how we, when you um, have something really minty, that it, it makes... Your, it lingers. It lingers in your mouth and has kind of a fresh feel. Mm-hmm. The aftertaste to me, though, almost... Maybe it's because of the minty feel. It's almost toothpastey. <laughs> toothpastey. In the yeah, not when you initially sit. When you initially sit, before I start breathing, you know, aerating it, it's 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 a bit bitter. But when you breathe, it gets you get a little bit of a minty mouth feel and taste. A little powdery, maybe. No, no, I wouldn't say powdery. Okay. No, no. Yeah, that's... Thank you, Mr. Averett. I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I don't know... Would you compare it to maybe rosemary? Because that's kind of what's coming to mind for me a little bit. Maybe a teensy, tiny bit of rosemary. But Mm -hmm. mostly I'm getting like a toothpaste feel. Would you drink this again? Are you bothered by the anise? I probably wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, I don't think this is one that I personally would uh, revisit. So you liked uh, L'Italien better? I'm going to trust that that uh, is a yes because I don't remember that It's by one. It's by the same producer. Right, I just don't remember how... It long. was really flowery. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to assume uh, as you're the one who records this information that yes, I, I, would, I would say that based on uh, your recollection yeah i probably do like it more than okay. that uh, i like the other one more than this one because yeah, I, I don't remember any of the names of these brands no offense but you know yeah i don't think this is one i would revisit okay. personally but so do you like the mintiness of it and not the mouthfeel you know i just had a light burp <laughs> with the um it tastes kind of toothpastey like spearmint toothpastey yeah I don't, I, yeah I'm not, I'm not a fan this one's not for you this okay. one's not for me I wouldn't yuck somebody who said that they like it I really like um, it. but for me yeah for me this is a no-go yeah like uh what I said earlier in, in my review is that this reminded me of like a earthier mintier version of jade tremendous oxygen a which is my favorite one that one you didn't like as much just because of how heavy it was on the anise okay um but you're saying it's it, it's too minty for you yeah yeah i'm getting too much toothpaste thought in my <laughs> head here you know Okay, well, so. thank you very much for your feedback. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, so you would not recommend this necessarily for a newbie? Not unless they really like brushing their teeth. Or breath mints. If, or breath mints. Or if they're a dentist. If they're a dentist, I'm sure they love it. <laughs> so, there you go. I, I'm sure this would be one of those 9 out of 10 dentist approved situations. So... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Averett. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Love you. Love you too. Mm-hmm. All right, so you heard it from Kenny. He doesn't necessarily like dislike it, but it's just not for him, and I can totally understand that. I would say that with the piney and very earthy flavors that I'm getting from this one, I am getting little remnants and little whispers of something that's a little rosemary like, and rosemary is obviously a staple spice you know around like italy and france and everything like that so if this is in here i would not be surprised it's giving rosemary but i love it so i would say that if you are already a fan of the traditional absinthe flavor profile and you want something a little deeper and a little more complex and a little earthier then this is probably the one that you would gravitate towards. So flavor, I would give it a four and a half stars, like I stated before. And I I like that there's the Holy Trinity. All right, so now we're going to check out the mouthfeel. It definitely has a very nice, like silky lingering mouthfeel. And like what Kenny says, it kind of leaves the impression in your mouth like you had a breath mint. So I can imagine that this would be like a nice like after dinner absinthe and typically I would not recommend absinthe for like after dinner because absinthe is technically an aperitif so it's supposed to be had before dinner. But if you kind of wanted to get those lingering flavors of the dinner like out of your palate, this would be a really good way to polish it off, I think. So lingering mouthfeel, it's a minty mouthfeel, it's really nice. 
and it's really refreshing and honestly I think that this could be enjoyed either during like the winter time or the summer time I know that there are some people out there who plan their absinthe consumption or like select their absinthe brands that they want to enjoy based on what season it is and to me I never think that deeply about absinthe unless I'm thinking about like cocktails like I think about like the secondary flavors and what else the absinthe has to offer whenever I think about how to make it in a cocktail but honestly this is a wonderful standalone absinthe I would not want to put this in a cocktail and I don't mean that to to say like oh this absinthe would be bad in a cocktail necessarily but I think this this absinthe has so much to offer that I think you would lose some of the nuance of this absinthe if you were to put it in a cocktail. So I think this is one of those few absinths that works really, really well by itself and not necessarily in a cocktail. Maybe in an absinthe frappe, maybe, but I think this is an excellent standalone absinthe. So for a mouthfeel, I wanna give it four and a half stars. All right, one last little sip for the road. Such a good glass of absinthe, and I really like having the very end of the glass too. It's just just a last little parting kiss, so to speak, when it comes to the bottom of a glass of absinthe. Yeah, so I really, really, really enjoy this absinthe. I think it's wonderful. I would definitely recommend it for people who like the traditional like flavor profile, but they want something a little earthier and a little mintier, a little fresher. And again, it, it's weird that I would recommend this for like after dinner, but I'm definitely recommending this for like an after dinner absinthe if you felt so inclined. So with that being said, thank you so much to all of you for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being so patient with me in regard to my long absence pardon the pun, from making absinthe reviews and other content that I enjoy, but life got crazy. And I, like I said, I was suffering from some health issues, but I will be seeing a doctor about that sometime this week. Fingers crossed that everything goes well. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button to make sure that you're subscribed and make sure you hit that bell icon for notifications so that you can see my videos about absinthe, the gothic subculture, gothic literature, book recommendations, and goth music, and a couple of other fun things because we like to have a little fun around here. And it, uh, thank you so much to my patrons for your support every single month. I really, really appreciate it. I could not do what I do without you guys. You guys are the lifeblood of what happens here on this channel. And to everyone, you're amazing. I love you, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.